What is wrong with people? It's a question that reverberates through the corridors of history, echoing in the hearts of those who have witnessed the relentless march of humanity, and yet, the persistent shadow of its failings. Why wars? Why hunger? Why hate? Why segregation? Why discrimination? Why are so many mentally sick? Where are we going? And more importantly, how can we change the story? Look around. The world is a tapestry woven with the threads of our collective existence, yet those threads are frayed, tangled, and often stained with the colours of despair. Wars erupt like violent storms, tearing apart the very fabric of societies, leaving behind scars that may never heal. Nations rise against nations, not just for land or power, but for ideologies that often seem as fragile as the paper they're written on. What fuels this madness? Is it fear? Is it a desperate grasp for control? Or is it simply that we have forgotten how to see each other as fellow human beings? Hunger, too, gnaws at the edges of our conscience. In a world brimming with abundance, it's an abomination that millions go to bed with empty stomachs. What kind of society allows this to happen? It's not just a failure of distribution. It's a failure of empathy. We have built systems that prioritise profit over people, where food becomes a commodity rather than a basic human right. We turn a blind eye, distracted by our own comforts, as if the suffering of others is somehow a distant echo, unworthy of our attention. And then there's hate, that insidious poison that seeps into our lives, turning neighbour against neighbour friend against friend. It festers in the dark corners of our minds, feeding on ignorance and fear, breeding division where unity should flourish. Why do we allow ourselves to be swept away by such destructive emotions? Why do we cling to stereotypes and prejudices that serve no purpose other than to dehumanise those who are different from us? Hate is a choice a choice that we make every time we refuse to engage with the unfamiliar, every time we let fear dictate our actions. Segregation, whether by race, class or ideology, is another symptom of our fractured humanity. We create walls, both literal and metaphorical, to separate ourselves from those we deem other. It's a coward's way out, a refusal to confront the richness of diversity that surrounds us. Segregation is not just a physical separation, it's a mental barrier, a refusal to acknowledge that every person, regardless of their background, has a story worth hearing. How can we expect to grow, to evolve, if we confine ourselves to echo chambers, afraid to step outside the boundaries we've constructed? Discrimination, in all its forms, is a stain on our collective conscience. It's the denial of opportunity the dismissal of potential, the erasure of identity. It thrives in the silence of complicity, in the acceptance of the status quo. Why do we allow it to persist? Why do we remain passive witnesses to the injustices that unfold around us? It's as if we've become desensitised, numb to the suffering of others, convinced that change is too daunting, too complex, too far out of reach. And what of mental illness? It's a silent epidemic, often overlooked, stigmatised and misunderstood. We live in a world that demands perfection, yet we are all flawed, all grappling with our demons. The pressures we face, social media, economic instability, the relentless pursuit of success, combine to create a toxic environment that can suffocate even the strongest among us. Many are left to navigate their struggles in isolation, shrouded in shame, while the world continues to spin, oblivious to their pain. Where are we going? It's a question that hangs in the air, heavy with uncertainty. Are we on a path toward progress, or are we spiralling into chaos? The answer lies in our hands. We have the power to rewrite the narrative 
to challenge the systems that perpetuate these cycles of violence, hunger, and hate. But it requires courage, a willingness to confront uncomfortable truths, and an unwavering commitment to change. How do we change the story? It begins with education, with fostering a culture of understanding and empathy. We must teach our children to value differences, to embrace diversity, and to recognize the shared humanity that binds us all. It requires open dialogue, a willingness to listen and learn from one another, to dismantle the barriers that divide us. We must also advocate for systemic change, demanding policies that prioritize the well-being of all individuals, not just a privileged few. We need to challenge the status quo, to hold those in power accountable for their actions, and to push for a world where hunger is eradicated, where mental health is prioritized, and where discrimination is met with resistance. Above all, we must cultivate compassion in our daily lives. It starts with small acts of kindness, with reaching out to those who are suffering, with standing up against injustice, no matter how daunting the challenge may seem. Each of us has a role to play in this collective story, and every action, no matter how small, contributes to the larger narrative. So, what is wrong with people? Perhaps it's not that we are inherently flawed, but rather that we have lost sight of our potential for goodness, for connection, for love. It's time to reclaim that potential, to rewrite the script of our existence, and to build a world where wars are relics of the past, where hunger is a distant memory, and where hate has no place. The future is unwritten, and it is up to us to shape it. Let us choose wisely.